he was uh, I don't know following me everywhere I think he knew where I live where I'm living so it's a little bit creepy the story of Simon Leviev nicknamed the tinder swindler blew up on Netflix after its release I don't understand how someone can be so well, it turns out that Simon isn't the only Tinder swindler in history. While the original con man made up a completely new identity, Lithuanian Viktor Babayev had a better idea. Posing as an up-and-coming European basketball talent Rokas Jakubaitis, Babayev deceived multiple women and conned tens of thousands of euros from them. This is how he did it. At the end of 2020, Lithuanian social media exploded after a young woman came out with a statement on Facebook about a guy her friend had been seeing. According to her, this guy's real name was Viktor Babayev, and for the last few months he's been pretending to be Žalgiris Kaunas rising star Rokas Jokubaitis. I found like a random chat in Messenger and one girl asked like uh, half a year ago, you don't know uh, your friend or someone uh, who is called uh, Viktor Babayevas? I said I don't know him. I'm like uh, bye bye. It's incredible how how much how much time he spent, like to you know I don't know, um, faking the identity. So it's uh, crazy. Just like in the Netflix original, it all started on Tinder. In her post, she recalls thinking she got really lucky and just matched with Rokas Jakubaitis. Although she wasn't a huge basketball follower, she did her homework and googled Jalgiris guard's name. She wasn't going to believe him that easy though, and expected the Tinder profile to be fake, as these sort of accounts commonly pop up. Lithuanian Tinder swindler knew what he was doing, and immediately invited her to meet up so she could see that he was the real deal. Obviously, as most con men do, Babayev had to put on a gentleman act and offered to pick her up from home. Once he arrived, she saw a man in a new Volkswagen Arteon marked with multiple Žalgiris logos. On top of that, he was rocking the official Žalgiris clothing that had Rokas Jakubaitis' name and jersey number on it. And last but not least, he really did resemble the player at first glance. Or at least, that's what she said. That's what she said! <laughs> Surely, once you become someone else than you actually are, it becomes difficult to keep those lies consistent. Therefore, Viktor Babayev had two stories, one for the girls on Tinder and the other one for the rest of the world. First of all, it was like funny, like a uh, new thing, like uh, what, what the hell happened. But after that, uh, I thought like it's like serious thing, you know, after that girls, uh, you know, when they see, when they see me, Maybe they don't know, like, they ask if you're a real rocker, so a little bit, you know, strange. To his Tinder matches, he was Rokas Jokubaitis. To his acquaintances, such as teammates at one of the amateur teams he played for, he was a former professional basketball player, Viktor Babayev. In order to explain his Žalgiris branded car or clothing to his teammates, he had prepared a whole new bag of lies. His former teammates told us they noticed holes in his story even before it all became public and did not take him too seriously at that moment. Babayev was posing to be the godchild of Žalgiris Kona's GM, Paulus Matijunas. He kept promising to his teammates that godfather Matijunas would show up at the stands to watch their next game in the amateur league. He also told the story of playing for a basketball club in London for 200,000 euros a year in the past, and how now he's just recovering from an injury in the amateur league, which was only ranked 7th in Vilnius City. Apparently, some team in London was paying 200,000 euros for this shooting form. Another example could be his supposed relationship with one of the biggest European basketball agents, Tadas Bulatas. On their team's group chat, Babayev would even go into detail, explaining that when he was playing in London and was represented by Bulatas, the agent would get paid 7% of his contract fee. At the end of the day, his teammates never had a chance to meet Bulatas or finally see Motiunas at one of their games. 
While his stories were unbelievable to his teammates, his main target, the girls on Tinder, struggled to untangle his web of lies. To make it as believable as possible that he was indeed Rokas Yokobaitis, Viktor Babayev was bombarding his victims' phones with the scenes from his professional basketball life. If Zhalgiris was playing that day, they'd be getting a video from Zhalgiris Arena. Not only that, he would also send videos and photos of Zhalgiris players standing by the team bus while they were on their way to the arena or the plane. Yes, you heard that right. He would literally follow the team's bus, then jump out of the car to make videos so it would look like he was a part of the team. We had to ask Rokas whether he or other players ever noticed a strange guy who kept taking photos of them on more than one occasion. Everyone was asking, like, uh, because he had, uh, like, from rent, uh, car rent uh, company, he took uh, Arteon Volkswagen, this gold one, and had, uh, like, stickers on, on the side. And we, we thought, like, who, who is driving this car? Like, always after the games, it, like, uh, he, he was parking the car. And uh, I remember Arturas Milaknes uh, told me the story, or Yankunas, that he came to the, you know, I don't know, from main entrance, not main entrance, but where is security. And he was, you know, with the all, uh, you know, gear, Jalgiris gear. And they thought maybe it's, you know, football player or something. So, you know, it's a little bit, you know, right now funny, but at that moment, you know, random, random person like walking next to, to, to us, so strange. Another small but yet important detail was that if Zhalgiris was playing or practicing, Babayev's phone was always turned off, so that you couldn't reach him or make plans with him. Shortly after every game, he would call the girls to ask whether they watched the game and if they liked his performance or any specific plays. Did you see that shot I made in the third quarter? In addition, he would share fabricated gossip from Zhalgiris' locker room, or videos from hotels where Zhalgiris would often stay. The crucial part of his deceit was using the help of others, just like the real Tinder swindler. When Babayev would go out on a date with his victim, he would make sure that a complete stranger would approach them and conveniently ask to take a photo with him or congratulate him on a great game, of course calling him Rokas in the process. Just like Simon Leviev, Viktor Babayev had another target in mind. To swindle as much money as he could from the girls he dated. We got in there, send her blocks. Half a million in cash. At first, he would pretend to be genuinely seeking a relationship, and money was the least of his worries. After all, he did have a shiny new car, a supposed contract with one of the biggest basketball clubs in Europe, and a very bright future financially. At the beginning of his relationships, when Babayev needed something, he would buy it himself. Not only that, but he would use Rokas Yokobaitis' name when purchasing. He was, you know, using my name in CTB, like uh, this uh, car app. So, you know, maybe after that I thought uh, maybe they will block my account. So, it's nothing serious, but, you know, no, 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 nothing good. There's a story of him buying a laptop in the name of Rokas Yokobaitis, right next to one of his victims. Or the story of one of the girls going to the gym together with Babayev, where the administrator would refer to him as, you guessed it, Rokas Yokobaitis. After two months of dating, the scamming would begin. In the spirit of Simon Leviev, Babayev would come to girls for financial help. He would tell a story of how he and his agent messed up while declaring taxes and got his bank card blocked. Therefore, he really needed to borrow some money. In cash, of course. I need more, I need more than that. If girls had any doubts, he would calm them down. I am Rokas Yokobaitis. Do you really believe that I would steal from you? Babayev asked for money for all sorts of things. Money for his grandmother's funeral, food for his dog, Airbnb, and many other things. But perhaps his favorite one was renting cars. He would use the girls' cards to drive around the city using car rental services. To ensure that it wasn't a scam, he would send screenshots of huge transfers he supposedly made from a UK bank account, explaining that the money simply just hasn't come in yet, and it will take some time. It is hard to pinpoint exactly how long Babayev successfully conned money pretending to be Yokobaitis. 
but just like Simon Leviev, he eventually got exposed. Media outlets report that Viktor Babayev swindled around 50,000 euros from all the girls combined. Lithuanian police got a total of 18 reports from different victims regarding Mr. Babayev. It turns out the police were already familiar with Viktor Babayev as he had been prosecuted before. The good part is that it didn't take long for police to catch the Lithuanian Tinder swindler. One of the victims contacted the police on December 10th and just two days after, on December 12th, Babayev was caught in one of the hotels in Vilnius. It was a big story in Lithuania. Even the police shared the video of his arrest in their official YouTube channel, where they went through Babayev's fake Zhargiris clothing. Just take a look at this. According to the police reports, Viktor Babayev was detained for three months. There hasn't been any more public information regarding the case ever since, but we can hope that Babayev had to pay back all of his victims and learned a hard lesson. There can only be one, Rokas Jokubaitis. I don't know, no, nothing, nothing to worry about, because, you know, right now, right now, you know, maybe the story is a lesson for others, you know, for the girls, I think, so, yeah.